How you doing, Willie? I'm all right, thank you very much. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, and welcome all to Game of My Life, where I talk to a former player about a special game in his career. Join me today is uh, William McAnally. 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 That's one hell of a mouthful. I tried it. I didn't think I'd get it quite correct, but you did perfect a wonderful kick on the 3rd of October in 1970 with you and Ernie Hunt. We're going to talk about that donkey kick. We're going to go back. We're going to take a trip down memory lane and revisit that game. Coventry City 3, Everton 1. Noel Campwell was the manager of uh, of your boys, Coventry City, and Harry Catrick's team were champions of England that visited Ifield Road on that day in front of 29,212 fans. Firstly, what was your memories about that game and playing against the champions of England? Well, obviously, obviously the, the, the free kick, um, but also like because Everton were Everton were sort of like champions. Uh, if they're champions you play against, you, you want to try and beat them, you know, yeah. because because they're champions, you know. Um, but obviously the free kick was the, the the biggest thing about it, you know, and, and it actually coming off as well. So um, you know, and, and everything just seemed to everything just seemed to sort of fit into place when we took the when we took the free kick. Let's start with that free kick then. Where did it come from, Willie? Well, I, I, from what I remember, there was with a, with a coach at Coventry called Bill Asprey. Yep. And he'd been, he'd been to, I think he'd been to Lillishaw during the, the close season on a coaching course, and he'd come back and he'd and he asked us to to try to try this free kick out, you know. And we would, like we we were saying you must be after what, you know. And uh, but anyway, we tried, and Ernie Ernie was a great volleyer of the ball, great striker of the ball, and. Um, we, we, so we tried it in training and stuff like that, and a couple of times it come off, and then other, most times and not it didn't, you know. So, uh, but just on that day, we'd, we'd, we'd made up our minds we were going to we were going to try it. And uh, there's myself standing over the ball, and there's Ernie waiting for me to flick it up. And, and, and beside Ernie was Dave Clements. And if you see the if you see the but the 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 the, the, um, the match back again, he. As I flick it up, Dave goes to try and get involved, and Ernie's going to sort of like try and push him out of the way a little bit, you know. But the thing is, we ever they they they, they didn't move because they hadn't a clue what was going, what was happening. Yeah. And uh, obviously, I flicked it up and flicked it up just just at the right size at the right level. And uh, Ernie, I say, Ernie was one of the best volleyers I've ever seen in the ball. And as soon as he left his as soon as he left his boot, it was it was in the net. You knew it was, you knew it was going to be a goal. No. You know? You flicked it up a hell mm-hmm. of a distance, didn't you? You must have flicked it up six or even seven foot in the air. Yeah, in fact, in fact, to be honest, mate, I probably flicked it up too high. Yeah, but because Everton didn't do anything because they didn't know what was happening, you see. Yeah, you know, so they never even they never even sort of tried to to close it down because they just didn't have a clue. And plus the fact that I'd, I'd go it behind, I'd go it in between my legs. I'm, I'm sure they'd be wondering, well, what's he going to do now? Mm-hmm. You know. So and then I say I flicked it up and I say I flicked. To be honest, I probably flicked it too high. But as I say, as soon as it, as soon as it left Ernie's boot, that was that was a that was a goal. Were you always on free kicks, Willie? And and how come it was down to you and Ernie to to do the free kicks? Was it something that you two had already practiced before yeah, the yeah, coach? Yeah. Well, usually, like, usually in teams, you get you get people who get involved in free yeah. kicks. It was like when I come to when I come to the walls, we. We have a, you know, it's, it's usually a couple of sort of like ball players, I suppose, that that, that do it, you know. Um, so that's just, and I think you get that most clubs. There's always there's always sort of two or three players that take take free kicks and stuff like that. And in training, what was your success rate on that donkey oh, not kick? Very, not very good, mate. To be honest. <laughs> <laughs> was you was you surprised when you scored against Everton? Was it a well, bit? Of no, a... I wasn't surprised. It was it was just great that that, that it come off. Yes. If you if you just spoke to Ernie, bless his bless his heart and bless his soul, um, he was saying that um, we tried it. Put them uh, probably a week before or or a fortnight before, and they said there was a big there was a big clock behind the 
behind the, the goal at Tottenham and he says and he says I nearly smashed the clock, he said. You know? So um it, they'd been tried it a couple of times and it hadn't really it hadn't really come off, you know. But at that day uh, and the, the other thing about that day was, I think it was the first time that match of the day was on was in colour, yeah, as well, you know. So everything just fell into place basically. And they had a couple of camera angles, and on the one camera angle, it pretty much missed it, didn't it? It was it, you were almost disguised, as you say. The ball was by yeah. in between your legs, and you flicked it up, and everybody was watching with bated breath. What yeah. was Willie Carr what, gonna what do? You- yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now, yeah. it got voted goal of the season, didn't it? And you yeah, also yeah. tried it again at Stoke City that season, and then FIFA banned it, didn't they, at the end of the season? Well, I thought, I thought it was the FA that got it banned, to be honest. Really? Because okay. Because they, they said that I was, I was touching the ball twice, which I suppose I was. But for me, it was like, you know, you're always looking out for something new. So I thought it was just a bit petty to yeah, ban it sort of thing, you know. But 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 what it, what it did do? It started a, a few more free kicks because I know that uh, Asa Hartford and Dennis Stewart at um, at Man City, uh, I think Asa just used to put his foot under the ball and flick it up for um, for Dennis Stewart for the goal for that as well. And then I think there was uh, at Southampton there was Matt Letizia and somebody else, Jimmy Jell, and and the the at man at Southampton. The lad that took the free kick just rolled it towards Martin. He flicked himself and then volleyed it in. Yeah. You know? But the difference between ours was that I'd got it between my legs, so by law, I was touching it twice. And the other thing was that the, because I flicked it up, the ball didn't... The ball was supposed to... Apparently supposed to carry its own circumference, which it didn't do when I flicked it up. Yeah. You know? So... But it brought another... I brought another sort of like two free kicks into, into life as well. He certainly did. Can you remember your teammates, uh, the the Coventry lineup on that day? Oh, God. I, I know uh, Glaze had been goal. Yep. Uh, uh, Mickey Coop and Chris Punk, uh, probably the full backs. Yep, maybe. yep, yep. Uh, and centre half, Jeff Blockley. Correct. Uh, and uh, the lad that was at Liverpool, Jeff, Jeff Strong. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then there was myself. Yep. Uh, uh, Dave Clements. Yep. Was, Chris, was Chris Catlin playing? No. No. Uh, Clem, Clem was probably full back then. And it was it'd be me and it'd be Hutchie, uh, uh, Ernie. Um, I'm just trying to think now. Uh, when you say oh, when you say Hutchie... Yeah, Tommy Hutchie's... No. No, he didn't play No, that. Tommy didn't play that game. They come then, maybe. Neil Martin played. Oh, Neil really, Martin, yeah. John O'Rourke. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Brian Alderson. Brian, Brian Alderson. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. the Coventry City lineup. Right. Can you remember the Everton lineup? Well, I know it was um, like and goal was um, what do you call him? Was it Harvey? Andy Rankin. Andy Rankin, right back would oh, right back would uh, Keith I Newton. Who? Keith Newton. Right, uh, Brian Brian LeBone. Uh, Brian LeBone didn't play that day. No, no. Uh, I think who else then? Tommy Wright. Ah, uh, Tommy Wright. Ah, uh, John yeah. Hurst. Yeah, uh, Ray Wilson. No, Roger oh. Kenyon played. Roger Kenyon, oh, no, yes. The midfield trio of um, Kendall, uh, Harvey, uh, and Ball. Yeah, Harvey, Harvey, and um, they, they were called um, what were they called? The they Trinity, were, uh, the Holy Trinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were all magic players. They were. Joe Royal, Alan Whittle, and well, Johnny yeah. Morrissey made up Everton's yeah, eleven. Yeah. What? What? what was the little? What was the little blonde hair lad? Was yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. What did Everton's response to to the goal uh, be? Well, I don't. Well, that, that, well, we 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 weren't bothered. We we just turned around and uh, were sort of like got hands up in the air and went, going back towards the yeah. half of the line. You know, we didn't even bother about what they thought. You know, so we were just we were just over the moon that it, that it come off as well. You know, so in the players' bar after Willie, did any of the Everton players comment on it? From what I remember, mate, it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember, and I probably had a couple of pints by then, anyway. So, and you had a decent season that season, didn't you? You finished tenth. You you'd finished sixth the season before, and and got yourself right. into the first cup. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What was your? <coughs> it, 
Any right. other memories on that that game against Everton apart from the donkey kick? And why was it called the donkey kick? Who christened it? Well, it was, that's because I was like a donkey. Yeah. It kicks behind itself, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's basically what it was, you know. I know we tried, they, 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 they'd asked us to try it um, before a pre-season match, or years, years later, a lot of years later. Yeah. And uh, they took us to a high field road, um, but uh, we got out on the pitch to try it, and uh, oh God, I was struggling to flick it up, because I was struggling to bend my knees. <laughs> then when I, when I did flick it up, Ernie was smashing the ball into the into the wall, because uh, we got some young lads in the wall, you know. And yeah. <laughs> in the end, what we had to do is, I had to sort of like, Toss it up with my hands and then Ernie volleyed it and I think he volleyed it straight into the young lads in the, in the, in the wall again, you know. So I think they I think they gave it up as a bad job, to be honest with you. It's you very know? difficult replicating perfection, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the 90 minutes, anything else in that 90 minutes that was memorable for you? Ernie scored two, Neil Martin yeah. scored the other goal for Coventry City yeah. that day. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I can't remember, mate. No, yeah. just, just a long time ago. Your, your memories of the season... Um, that was the first season that Coventry City played in uh, in Europe. Yeah, yeah. Trattia Plovdiv was the first one. Yeah. We played against them. We beat, I think we beat them three and four nothing over there, I think it was. And then we beat them at home. Uh, and then we drew, I think we drew Bayern Munich, wasn't it? Yeah, you did, yeah. yeah. And, that was, and, that, and that was, um, oh, that was, uh, who would you call him? The big centre-half. Played well, for them. Well, in those days, um, pr- uh, probably Franz Beckenbauer would have been Beckenbauer, in the team. Yeah, <laughs> Paul yeah. Breitner would have been in the team. They had a, uh, a very good f- football team there at Bayern Munich yeah. in those days. Yeah, and they were a, they were a really good team because I know they yeah. they battered us they battered us over there. And the, what the other thing about that was that uh, I think I don't know whether Bill Glaze was injured, but I know um, Eric McManus went and go. Yeah, and. Uh, they 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 used, they used a, a black and white spotted ball over there, and uh, every every shot this it was raining because it was raining, so the ball was sort of like um, hanging off the ground, you know. And every time they seemed to have a shot, Eric seemed to di- dive for the ball, and just before it got to him, just used to bounce and and just bounced over him, you know. So um, he had a bit of a bit of a nightmare sort of thing, you know. And then uh, I, beat, I think we beat them two one at home, but yeah. obviously the the, uh, the match was over then. But uh, I know when, when, when training the one day, they they got these um, they got these black and white balls out, right? To train and somebody shouted, "Oh, don't show Eric them! <laughs> He'll have a heart attack." Because <laughs> they say that at that match, that every time they seemed to shot, he dived and it just seemed to bounce just before just before him, just went over him, you know. Now, your, your Coventry career started in 1967, didn't it? You yeah, were born yeah. in uh, in Glasgow, but yeah. your, your, most of your childhood, from the age of 13, anyhow, yeah. was spent yeah. in Cambridge, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'll actually, to be honest, when I came down to England, it was 1963, and then I was only there for two years before I came up to Coventry. Yeah. But my family, my family still, still live there anyway. Oh, right. You know, all my family still live in that area. How did the uh, move to Coventry come? Uh, uh, because uh, to Coventry, just because uh, I was playing for Cambridge School Boys and um, uh, was doing all right. And the, the, obviously, around Cambridge was around about the London area. Like, yeah. It's all about the well from London. And, uh, and I went and had a look around uh, like Tottenham, Arsenal, um, West Ham. Um, and uh, West Ham was... Uh, out of the three, I preferred uh, West Ham. Yeah, but also come up and have a look at Coventry, and I just I just liked the the feeling about Coventry, um, uh, and it seemed to be, and I think it was just sort of like taking off then with Jimmy, yeah. with Jimmy Hill, you know, with Sky Blue Train and stuff like that, you know, and uh, I I actually moved into moved into my digs. I, I left school on uh, on the Friday, April sixth, nineteen sixty five, and I went into digs on the Saturday and started on the Monday. Blimey. So I just uh, left, just left school at fifteen, and just within two days I was up in Coventry. But I was I, I was really lucky because I moved. I, I was in the same digs for five years before I before I got married, and the the the, the, the people that were my landlord and landlord were, were, were brilliant. They were magic. And and they were magic days. You've alluded to oh. Jimmy Hill 
transformed Coventry. Oh, yeah. Well, you had the Sky Blue train and all that, you know, and uh, they used to have, um, I think they played bingo in the train and stuff like that, you know. But Jimmy was, we some, sometimes, I think, with reserve matches, we'd have about 9,000 as well, you know. Everybody <laughs> It was just on fire at the time, and, and he was, and he was, he was, he, he got some great ideas and stuff like that, you know. He was, he was a, a revolutionary, wasn't he, in in he terms of football? I, yeah, he was. And but, but the other thing was, he wouldn't, say, he wouldn't take any answers off anybody either, you know. Because I did, I only played about. Uh, he gave me my debut. I played about six games before he before he left because I think he'd already started getting into the television by then. Yeah, and uh, and I think he left at. Um, just after the Christmas or something like that. See, I think I played about six games. And then no Cantwell come in, you know, after that. Now, what, what was Noel like? Because he was quite Noel, a charismatic no, figure as well, wasn't he? Yeah, no, no, no it was great. No, it was, no, no, it was great. But, um, like, as long as you'd done what you wanted, it was OK. But if you if you went against him, he'd let you know. Yeah. And he was a big fella as well. But, uh, but no, he was another... I liked him as well, you see. And some of, there was a lot of coaches. There was Alan... Uh, Alan Dix was a, he's, um, I think, uh, was one of the assistant managers at the time. And there was a lad who was the, the, the youth team coach was a lad named Pat Sayward. And Pat was an Irish fella. He was, I think he played for Ireland as well, Pat. But he, he, he was he was great with the, the lads, and he, he got this thing where, um, uh, for match for match day, this is within the youth team. You had to wear a collar and tie, right? Yeah. And your tie and your socks had to match. They had to be the same colour, you know. If, if they weren't, you'd, you were on a hiding to nothing. You know, it was just, it was just discipline, really. Yeah. Well, just, uh, but it was, but it was great, and but it was great for, it was great for the, the kids as well because he, he loved them to play football, as well. And you made your debut at uh, at Arsenal, didn't you? Yeah, in 1967. Come on, sub in the last twenty twenty minutes, I think it was. Yeah. When did? Right. I don't think many touches the ball, but uh, but the great <laughs> one anyway. So, cap six times as well yeah. during your Coventry career. Your yeah. debut being against Northern Ireland. That's right. Yes, it's at, uh, at Windsor Park. Yeah, yeah. And um, Dave Clem, who was at Coventry at the time, was playing for Ireland that day. He was, and we beat them. We beat them one nothing with a goal by Alan Gilzean. another great player. Yeah, and then uh, we played on and because the home international was Saturday. Wednesday, Saturday, and then on the on the Wednesday we played Wales at um, at uh, Hamden, and I think there was about thirty thirty thousand. We beat we beat Ireland one nothing, two nothing each way with Wales at Hamden. Then on the Saturday we played England at Hamden, and there was a hundred. I think there was a hundred and thirty seven thousand. There was, and uh, it was uh, just walking out into the from the from on from the tunnel out into the into the open air. Oh. Like the the atmosphere and the and the roar was it like they used to talk about the Hamden roar it was unbelievable and obviously we were hundred and twenty thousand people you know it was great it was magic and, and it was and a lot a lot of the England players but were, were a lot quite a few of them more than half were, were from the World Cup winning team as well you know that day so yeah you didn't do too bad against the World Cup winners did you certainly in nineteen sixty seven <laughs> come to Wembley and uh, gave England a, a football intuition. Oh, well, I had the three two guy. Yeah, yeah. Jim Baxter, I think it was that that one, wasn't it? Yeah, it certainly was. Playing yeah. keepy up on the pitch, yeah, that's right. and sit, sitting on the ball or something like that, wasn't he? He certainly yeah. did. He got up to all antics. He knew yeah. Jim Baxter. Did you ever yeah. play with Jim whilst you was uh, playing at no, Scotland? No, 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 no. He wasn't. He was, I think he probably. I don't yeah. know. Jim probably maybe getting on a bit by then. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. Maybe I'm doing a, a just a, just justice there. I don't know. But uh, but then I played with Dennis Dennis Law and. People like that, you know. Scotland had some great players. Yeah. Scotland have always produced some great players. Yeah. And hopefully going forward, Scotland will again produce more great yeah. players. Yeah. The last few years have done all right, haven't they? They've got some, got some decent players. They certainly, right. they certainly have, Willie. When did you first team up with um, Roger Patrick Hunt at Coventry City? Well, it was um, what was it? Ernie had been at um, I think he'd been to the Wolves, didn't he? He, yeah, he must yeah. have went from uh, he went he, he got transferred from from Swindon to Wolves, I think, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, and then, in the same season, he transferred to to Everton. Yeah. And then, and then he came to Coventry in the yeah. same season. So he was with, I think he was with three different clubs in one season. Uh, and that that was first time. But I, I, as soon as I seen Ernie Ernie playing, played with him in training, I knew it. 
um, you know, that uh, I'd love love playing with him because he he's, he he played the same way as I wanted to play sort of thing. But he he was he wasn't he wasn't the, the tallest of boats, but God, he was as strong as an ox, yeah. and he was very very skillful. He was, and he, and was, he was sorry, he was clever as well. He was very clever as well, and he got a lovely touch. And he was quite a comedian as well, wasn't he? He got a oh, sense God. of humour. <laughs> he was as daft as a brush. He was daft as a brush. He was. No, but but oh, really, really funny. I was. He, he couldn't. He couldn't swim. But what he could do was like because he used to love sunbathing. Yeah. And um, he like if he got if, he, if the sun was really hot and he started sweating, he he just got to stand up and just dive in. He could dive in the pool. Couldn't swim, but he just dive, keep to the side so he could get himself back out again. And then he go back on his. I could back on his lounger. It was, uh, it was, it was a funny man. It was really funny, you know. But uh, it was, uh, there was one we were on. Uh, we'd, we'd been out one night, and uh, I don't know if I should tell you this, but I'll tell you it anyway. <laughs> and uh, he'd, uh, we'd obviously had a drink, and he'd, he'd, um, he'd got up for the toilet, and uh, he sort of shut the door behind him, and then went through another door and shut it, and what he'd, what he'd, what he'd realised, he'd shut himself out of the room, and uh, he was in the corridor now in the hotel. Right. So at the end of the corridor, there was a there was a lift, and uh, bearing in mind he's got no clothes on, right? And uh, anyway, that the lift door opened, and who should be there but No Cantwell and uh, his assistant manager, and he and he shouted at him and he says, he says, what the hell are you doing? And then I just said, the peace of mind that there was a a plate was lying on the floor, so he just picked him up and just said to to, to no, he says, room service. <laughs> But that's but that's what he was like. He was he was on the ball all the time. He was brilliant. Yeah, you know, great lad. Some some wonderful times. Some oh, wonderful God. memories. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. a, a, a tremendous trip down memory lane, Willie. Yeah. Can I yeah. thank you for your time, sir? And um, we'll have a, another meet up, and we'll do a more in depth my seventies with Willie Carr, where we'll talk about your career in more depth. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great then, mate. For now, thanks, Willie. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Cheers, pal. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.